Hey guys, Tamago here. Now, before we start, I need to mention a major update to how this is gonna work. Thanks to a comment from Juka, it was brought to my attention that the amount of Neo points you can get from playing each game changes every month in order to keep the in-game economy in balance. So that means the value score is now trash, it means nothing. So from here on out, games will only receive one score, the game rating. Another change I'm making is that the game rating will now be a score from 1 to 10, so that there's still a fair amount of differentiation between the games. I've posted the updated scores for the last episode's games in the description, but the main ones you need to know are that Assignment 53 is now a 10, and Biscuit Brigade is a 2. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back to the Neopets experience. I returned to find Brightlegs in tears because he was dying of hunger. Are you serious, dude? It's only been 196 hours. What do you want me to do, feed you every day? I was surprised to see that despite him dying, his mood was content. Wow, Nimmo's really are peaceful creatures, aren't they? Anyway, I decided to get Brightlegs something to eat, only to find that the food shop was completely sold out. Yeah, restocks three times as much my ass. According to this bird, playing Daisaru was a good way to get food. So I checked it out and it turned out to be another chance game. So you already know it's disqualified. But I still needed the food, so I decided to play it anyway, coughing up five Neo points in the process. And then I lost. Naturally. I did get a new Battle Dome Challenger though, which basically means someone wants to fight me. So essentially, I just paid 5 Neo points for a death threat. Okay, thank you bird, you were no help at all. I went back to the food shop, which was now fully restocked, and holy crap was everything expensive. 1800 Neo points for a bitten apple? What? Who was it bitten by Jesus? And why does it cost more than this entire fruit basket? Who is in charge of the pricing here? Anyway, I decided to purchase the fruit basket and was given a chance to haggle for a lower price, which was great. I love a good bargain. Shopkeeper wanted 749 for it. I offered him 600 and then clicked on the Yerbal, which is this game's equivalent of captures. He said, nope, I won't take less than 644 Neo points for it, which meant I had already managed to get over 100 Neo points points off the sticker price, but I wasn't gonna let him off so easily, so I said, let's do 615. He says, tell you what, let's say 634. I say, how about we make that nice and round at 630. Shopkeeper accepts the offer and the fruit basket gets added to my inventory. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is some mighty fine haggling. It's important to note that the differences between the foods are purely aesthetic. When it comes down to actually eating the food, they all affect your Neopet the same way. Your pet's hunger will decrease by one point. So if your pet was dying and you fed it a fruit basket, it would now be starving. And if your pet was starving and you fed it a cheeseburger, it would now be famished. Doesn't matter if you feed it a Big Mac or a banana peel, your pet will be affected in the same way. So really, what's the point of buying this blueberry jelly donut for 5,300 Neo points when you could just head down to the general store and buy all the coffee and marshmallows you want? It's not being cheap. It's being practical. Hell, if I was poor enough, I would have taken Bright Legs to the soup kitchen, gotten all you can eat for free. Once he'd had his fill, I gave him a toy to play with and a book to read, and then he suggested that we play a game of Destructo Match. Hey, look at you trying to steer the direction of the video. Destructo Match is a game where you match blocks of the same color to clear the board and earn points. Some of the blocks have power-ups to help you out, and some of them have obstacles which make your job harder. It's exactly what it looks like. A lady back point and click puzzle game that you can kill a couple minutes with. The Tyrannian stylizing was alright and there are quite a few different game modes but they all follow the same basic idea. Overall it was just a very okay game. I don't know why Brightlegs wanted to play this one specifically but I'ma go ahead and give it a 5 out of 10. After that I headed down to the bookshop. Reading is how you increase your pet's intelligence and I'm really not trying to raise a dumb pet if I can help it. Although apparently I couldn't help it because they were sold out of all books. I don't know why this keeps happening. Hungry? What? Why would I come to a bookstore if I was hungry? Why not try Pizzeroo? Apparently this was the Neopets Pizzeria and it was also 
out of stock. Did you know you can click- No, but shut up. You have lied to me and led me on enough times. Just shut up now. God. Okay, forget the books. Next game was boss battle. In this one, you play as a little spaceship and your goal is to get as many points as possible by landing hits on this really big spaceship in the middle. But you can't actually destroy it, so you're just trying to see how high you can score before you die. Now, to be honest, I was not a fan of this game. The controls felt clunky and uncomfortable. The sound effects were a non-stop barrage of explosions. I played it with the sound off at one point, but that didn't make it much better. And overall, I just wasn't all that into it. 2 out of 10. Next game up was Brain Tree Quest. Now, I could already tell that this one wasn't gonna qualify, but I decided to go ahead and accept the quest anyway. The way it works is this dude, the Brain Tree, wants information, and specifically from me, he wanted to know where and when someone called Usalakiri died, and if I returned to him with the answer within an hour and seven minutes, I'd get a prize. So, naturally, the first thing I did was Google Usalakiri, hoping to find the answer lickety split. It. But it turns out the answers to the brain tree quest are randomized each time, so I wouldn't be able to find it so easily. Instead, I'd have to get help from the Esophagor, another monster living in the haunted woods. But before he'd give me the answers, he wanted me to help get him three specific foods, starting with spooky lime pudding. Now chances are I wasn't just going to find this thing in the regular food shop, especially since that place never seemed to be in stock anyway, and I didn't want to have to talk to that freaking bird again. So instead I used the in-game search engine to see if it was in stock somewhere else. Ah oh, okay, the spooky food shop, yeah this makes more sense. Oh for fu- There was still another option though. I could use the shop wizard to see if there were any other users selling it themselves. On Neopets, you can create your own storefront and sell items to other players in the marketplace. So I searched up Spooky Lime Pudding and found a lot of listings for it, with the cheapest being 4,600 Neopoints, which was significantly more expensive than the estimated value. So I checked for the other items instead and was able to get the Scary Soup for only 100 Neopoints and the Pumpkin Chip Surprise for just under a thousand. Although the storefront was quite a thing to look at. Control D to bookmark this shop for great deals every day. <laughs> no. I refreshed the listings for the spooky lime pudding and the new lowest price was 3000, which I figured I better pick up before someone else did. So a few minutes and over 4000 neo points later, I had all three foods for the esophagore, and in exchange I learned that Usulakiri died in the year 25 BN. But I didn't just need to know when she died, I also needed to know where, and apparently to find that out, I would have to get him three more foods? Yo, this prize better be worth it. I've already spent so many Neo points. By the end of this, Brightlegs will be eating at the soup kitchen. Oh yeah, the esophagus also wanted to fight me. I think that's just a common occurrence at this point. Alright, whatever. I picked up the wormy pasta for 440 neo points, which wasn't too bad. The brain candy mix, on the other hand, cost over 2,000 neo points, with the second cheapest listing being 55,000 neo points. What in the capitalism? And after seeing that the cheapest listing for the Count Cross buns was more than the amount of neo points I actually had, I figured it was time to play some more games. Bruno's Backwards Breakaway. This is a platformer where you have to collect all the potions in the level while avoiding the villagers and the rocks they throw. The levels have a looping design, meaning you can drop down endlessly as well as endlessly move either left or right. I thought it controlled very smoothly, the objective was simple but fun, and it did get more challenging as the levels went on, with more potions needing to be collected to complete the levels. What more can I say? I really like this game and I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Then I tried Brucey B slots, and this game was straight up evil. Now yes, as a slot machine, it is disqualified for being purely chance based, but unlike Bagatelle and Daisaru, this actually was a flash game, and it is deceptively easy to lose your money playing it. I didn't bother reading the instructions, so I had no idea how it worked, and more importantly, I had no idea that with each pull of the lever, I was spending 675 Neo points. And just like that, 
I had lost 2000 Neo points in under 15 seconds. So I was in a tougher position than ever because I still needed to buy the food for the esophagore and now I had less money than when I started. Luckily, once I refreshed the search for the foods, I was able to find them for cheaper prices. And so with all three items in my inventory, I returned to the esophagore who revealed that Usulakiri died in Neopia City. So with 39 minutes left and over 10,000 Neo points down, I submitted both answers to the brain tree and I was rewarded with a whopping one and a half thousand Neo points. And this branch. And he wants to fight me. Okay, well that was a huge waste of time. Disqualified. Next game was Ultimate Bullseye. Now, this one's very simple. You've got 10 arrows and a target to shoot at. Get as high a score as you can before you run out of arrows. There are also power-ups you can unlock too. This game was fine. 5 out of 10. Then I played Bumble Beams. In this one, you control tilting beams and have to drop the robots into the moving bins below. Be careful not to miss too many though, because if you do, you lose the game. This one was alright, and it had extra stuff such as stars to collect and beams with special properties to add a bit more depth and challenge. I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. Next I played the buzzer game, and this works exactly like the real life buzzer game where you've got to get the metal hoop to the end of the wire without touching the edge. You also get bonus points depending on how quickly you complete each level. Now, not to brag, but I was making light work of this. You see, I'd figured out that if you just pay attention to the tip of your cursor, the whole thing was much easier. That is until I realized that I had not actually been playing because you have to click to start the game. All right, whatever, round two, same thing, light work. Wait a minute, what? What the flip? Oh, you have to click and release the button to start. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, you know what? That, that makes I was thinking it was too easy. Anyway, now that I was playing this game properly, round one was still a cakewalk, and I finished with three bonus points to spare. But round two, I'll admit, I had a bit of an issue with. I don't know what it was with this specific area, but for some reason, I just could not stop messing it up. I had no idea what was going on. I even googled it just to check that I wasn't being trolled and that it was actually possible to complete. Wait, his cursor is still showing- Hey, that guy's cheating! This is possibly the most frustrating game I've played so far, and it's helped by the fact that as you progress further, more and more things start happening on screen to distract and startle you. As simple and annoying as it is, I had a lot of fun playing the buzzer game, and I'm gonna give it a 7 out of 10. Caption Contest, a site-wide competition where you write a caption for a given image and the winners are chosen at the end of the month. This month's image had a turtle running on a treadmill, and I wrote, when you're training to team up with Raphael and the squad, and there's a bunny watching. Listen, the creative juices were not flowing that day, cut me some slack, this one's disqualified. After some brief technical issues, I was back on track playing Carnival of Terror, a shooter where you've got to destroy the robot clowns before they attack. If you take too much damage or run out of ammo or time, it's game over. This game was okay, nothing particularly bad about it, but nothing so great either. I wouldn't come back to it anytime soon. 5 out of 10. Up next was Castle Battles, a Shockwave exclusive, otherwise known as Disqualified. Escape from Meridel Castle. Now, I might be wrong, but this has got to be one of the earlier games posted on the website, right? I mean, is that Times New Roman? This is an action platformer where you traverse your way through a castle with spikes on every imaginable surface. And where there are no spikes, you have Barney the Purple Killer Dinosaur. Luckily, you have a sword to deal with those things, but I'd say the main difficulty comes from the pinpoint precision with which you have to navigate through these spikes. The energy bar also means you can't fly forever, so you have to plan your moves accordingly. This game legit looks like something made in scratch, but as basic as it looks, the game is actually not that bad, and although this doesn't count towards the score anymore, I was able to get some decent Neo points from it too. Castle Escape gets a 5 out of 10? I was thinking a 6, but 
Uh, that time's New Roman, I, I couldn't do it. After that, I played Cave Glider. In this game, you parachute down a cave whilst avoiding touching enemies and the cave walls. Power-ups can also be picked up for extra health, time, and points. This game was fairly challenging, and although I wish there were more ways to defend yourself against the enemies, I thought it was pretty good. It also would have been nice if you got some health back after each level so you don't just die as soon as the next one starts, but all in all, it was a nice game. 7 out of 10. Caves and Corridors. This is another platformer, but it differs from other games I've seen since it actually saves your progress so you can return to it at a later time. Every level has a special fruit to collect and you beat the game once you find the Golden Idol. You've also got to watch out for spike traps, boulders, and other obstacles around each level. I would have liked this game, but the movement was way too clunky and rigid. Moving between vines was tedious, jumping over boulders was apparently impossible, and overall it just made it really hard to have fun with it. I can appreciate the effort put into creating multiple levels with a map and saved progress though, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Second to last game was Cell Block. In this one you play against computer opponents, and it's essentially Connect 5 but without the gravity. I won my first game, was rewarded with 100 Neo points, and then did not play further. Listen, you gotta quit while you're ahead. 4 out of 10. Final game was Chariot Chase, and this is a top-down racing game where you control your chariot and try to complete as many laps as you can before you lose all your lives. You lose lives by running into dung piles and other riders, but there are also power-ups you can pick up to help you out. This game was kinda difficult because while it's relatively easy to avoid the dung piles, Avoiding the other riders is a whole other challenge, especially since they don't try to avoid you, and the track has a freaking intersection. I got the hang of it after a couple of tries, and then gave the hard mode a go, which was essentially the same, except there were more dung piles, and I think the other riders were faster too. It was a decent game, but I wouldn't spend too much time playing it. I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. And those are all the games for this episode. So what have we learned? We learned that no shop in this game is ever in stock. We learned that the Braintree quest is a scam formulated by the Esophagore to get free food. And we learned that Usulakiri died in the year 25 BN in Neopia City. So yeah, that's 30 games down, about 220 left to go. Oh boy. What have I done?